Hi, I'm Davis Hemm with Loud Light, and this is your Week 13 recap of what happened in the legislative session. Week 13 is week one of the veto session, and the legislature made no progress on the big items of the year. The delay is with the school finance committee's inability to make a school funding formula capable of satisfying the Supreme Court's ruling that Kansas unconstitutionally underfunds K-12 schools. The other side of the delay is with the tax committee's inability to make a revenue bill capable of plugging a projected budget gap of well over half a billion dollars. The committee faces a large hurdle knowing the governor is likely to veto any bill that raises revenue. So any plan needs to be able to override with two thirds of the legislature. That's a tough order in the Senate chamber where a far right faction is committed to upholding the governor's signature tax breaks that have cost the state nearly a billion dollars in lost revenue each year. Starting in July, public facilities must provide intense security to be gun free zones. The governor is calling for $25 million to reach that threshold at public hospitals and mental health facilities, but a majority of legislators would rather just exempt them. Also this week saw the beginning of various university professors announcing they are resigning to take jobs in other states due to campus carry. The Kansas foster care system was privatized in 1997 and is overseen by the Kansas Department for Children and Families. Allegations of discriminatory practices and a string of children's deaths sparked an audit last summer that resulted in several disturbing findings from inadequate background checks to children being sex trafficked and abused. A bill to create a foster care task force that would make a corrective action plan to enhance accountability and protect children made its way through a committee, but is being prevented from debate on the floor by Republican Speaker Ron Reichman. The speaker cites concerns by DCF Secretary Phyllis Gilmore that the corrective action plan could potentially jeopardize federal funds by disagreeing with federal law. Representative Jared Owsley, ranking Democrat of the House Committee on Children and Seniors, called Secretary Gilmore's concern a red herring that is not legitimate in the slightest bit. The task force would meet this summer and fall during the interim of the legislative sessions. Therefore, if it isn't created before they adjourn, it would be several years before any investigations or improvements come about in the foster system. In federal politics, Republicans passed the American Health Care Act, which would remove most protections for those with pre-existing conditions. Kansas has one of the highest rates of pre-existing conditions in the nation at 30% of adults. All U.S. representatives from Kansas, including Marshall, Jenkins, Yoder, and Estes, voted for the bill. In response, protests, die-ins, and other actions have taken place at their offices across the state. The legislature is moving at a leisure pace, and it's pretty apparent that we're going to overtime in a week. There's still a possibility of another Medicaid expansion vote and other actions, but there's also a chance that the Speaker of the House and President of the Senate will shut down general orders preventing all activity outside of conference committees. I've been working on a video explaining the budget crisis more in depth and hope to have it out soon, so stay tuned. Until next time, thank you so much, Kansas.